I started something called the Perfect Score Project, which was this cockamamie idea that I had in 2010, and it was sort of a bonding experience with my son, and I was going to take 10 SA, I'm sorry, seven SATs over the course of the year, it's given seven times internationally, and, um, and tried 12 different methods of test prep, and I was going to do it the year before my son did it so that I could tell him what was the best, me best method of test prep. It was an interesting journey. It, uh, I got on the horse and I rode it in the way that it took me and it was in all sorts of directions that I didn't expect. But the unexpected joy of it, as I said, was, was the bonding that happened with my son because, you know, at this time in their lives where, you know, their friends are pulling them, like I was embedded deeply in there, like he had to do this test, he didn't really have a choice and it was going to be time consuming and so, you know, the result was um, we had to spend a lot of time together and we had a lot, we turned it into a lot of fun. He's actually really good at math. I don't know where he gets that from, but he loved to teach me the math, and um, he would correct my math walls for me. Um, he would write me apology notes with the vocabulary words, which of course warmed my <laughs> SAT heart. He would write SAT questions out of like our little everyday life issues. And I would, I would secretly put up little signs to kind of subliminally motivate him um, about the scores that I would dream that he got. <laughs> there's a difference between knowing something and knowing it like the ladybug has spots kind of knowing it and to do well on the SAT you have to know the material like the back of your hand so I tried everything I wrote math all over my walls and hung it up I tried to remember it and I, I tried um, I made recipe cards I um, with all the different kinds of math problems. I started writing my own SAT questions so I could get into the mind of the tester. Um, and incidentally, I think all of these are amazing ideas. I did a memory notebook. It's just that I didn't have enough time. Like I should have allotted 10 years. So there's my scores for the end for the year. And I'm gonna say, and this is after a lot of deep thought, um, that my scores tell the story about the SAT and test prep and what works and what doesn't and what you need to do. Reading. I did pretty well in the reading. I got in the 99th percent percentile. would have been nice to get higher. I, I kind of think I could get higher. <laughs> I'm going to go back. My math score I spent 95% of my time on the math, and I basically ended up, for all intents and purposes, with the same math score that I got in high school. I had some inability to do math, but I actually don't think that that is the case. Um, I know nobody will believe me about my scores, but I still believe that I'm, I'm good at math. Um, but I think the story is that I had a bad math education, and I didn't do math for 30 years, and there wasn't enough test prep in the world to get me to where I needed to be if I didn't have the solid skills to back it up. And I think that's where the, the test prep companies, a lot of the big ones, fall short and something to be aware of. If you don't have the solid skills, there's not enough test prep in the world that's going to help you. If you have the solid skills, test prep can help you. And if you don't have the solid skills, then you need to build those solid skills, and that's not a fast process. Those little desks right there, it is worth calling ahead and making sure that you don't have one of those because you have a test booklet, which is 8 by 11, you have uh, an answer booklet, you have your calculator, you have your pencils, and that will house one 8 by 11 thing. So you're going to add a shuffle factor, and then when people get tired after a four-hour test, calculators start dropping, and in the gym it echoes, and um, it was a terrible experience. When you sign up for the SAT, they give you all the options. It's like, here are all the places in your area. You have the right to pick whatever place you want to take the test. I would, and I did this for my son, preemptively make sure that we had a proper size test. After I took this test, I knew that it was a terrible idea. I would be very suspect of anybody who's going to um, guarantee a score gain. Because you don't know how, you know, look at me, I worked really hard on the math. Everyone was sure they were going to help me, and I, I couldn't improve. So, I mean, in fact, one guy I did use for my son. Um, that's how much I believed in him. Yeah, I guess your score is the best way to evaluate. You know, another thing is recommendations. However, Erica pointed out to me a very good point today, which is that make sure that you're coming from the same place as that person who recommended. So like maybe that kid got an 800 because they're taking all AP classes and they're, they have really solid basics and it'll be a different story for you.
you get one point if you get the answer right, and you get a quarter point off if you get the answer wrong. So the question is, do you guess or don't you guess? And everyone, there's as many different strategies on that, and I think it comes down to personal choice, how comfortable you are. Like my son was not a guesser. If he didn't know, he didn't answer. If you love it, it will love you back. You know, everyone thinks the passages are so boring and hard. You have to do it anyway, so why not have a good attitude about it? And I did find that it helped when I went in, even if I was faking it and I thought, this reading passage is going to be really interesting, um, I tended to do better, even if it was a little psychological trick. So anyway, those are my top 10 tips after having taken seven SATs in one year. Um, and it wasn't, as I said, what one might think, but um, hopefully I spared somebody a little, a little time. Does anybody have any?